Trigger warning. This story contains conversation about children, murder, and sexual assault. Please be advised. So I'm sorry that the story came out a little late. It was supposed to be released yesterday, but of course, July 4th, there was a lot going on, so I didn't get to release it, but I do hope that you all had a wonderful holiday. Today, we're going to touch on a crime that happened on July 4th, 2007 in Tacoma, Washington. So during that time, the president was George Bush. The chief executive has got to be bold within reason and daring in application. And the top song was Umbrella by Rihanna. When the sun shine, we shine together. Told you I'll be here forever. The day was Wednesday and families all across America were gearing up to celebrate our independence. This was very true for the Linux family who immigrated from Ukraine in 1997 in hopes of finding their American dream. Along with them was their two-year-old daughter, Zena, who was born on November 25th, 1994, and by 2007, she had grown into a beautiful 12-year-old. Zena did well in school and had ambitions of working in a spa. So, how did this day of celebration make a left turn? Unbeknownst to the Linux family, a man named Terrapon Adhan was angry and looking for someone to take his anger out on. Terrapon was born in 1965 in Thailand. His life was marked with tragedy, and by the age of three, he was being sexually assaulted by an older sibling and beaten by his father. The beatings would stop, however, after Terrapon's father left the family. His mother would remarry an American and move to San Diego in 1977. This would be the only thing Terrapon and Zena had in common, as they were both immigrants who came to America fairly young. After graduating high school, Terrapon became a Buddhist monk. Despite his past, it appeared that he was going in the right direction in life. He enlisted in the army and married Barbara Harris in 1986. The couple finally settled down in Washington state in 1989. The move could not save their marriage and the couple separated in 1990, eventually divorcing in 1998. The separation may have been due to Terrapon's recent conviction as all the trauma he suffered and suppressed finally reared its head. In 1990, Terrapon was convicted of incest and rape against his 16-year-old stepsister. It is well known that children of sexual trauma sometimes repeat the cycle of abuse. Being that these victims had no control over what happened when they were young, they grow up and they take their control back. Sexual assault of a child can leave physical and mental marks and if not dealt with properly, the victim can grow up with suppressed resentment and anger. In a way they believe by no longer being the victim, they are getting back their power and also getting back at their abuser. Terrapon only served two months in jail for the rape of his sister, and he was ordered to go to treatment for a total of five years. He was placed on a sexual offender list, but was not deported because his crime was considered a low risk, and he was also a first-time offender. Terrapon would move several times over the years, failing to update his address on the registry. He finally complied in 2002 when he was stopped for a traffic violation. In 1992, he was convicted of intimidating an individual with a weapon. The immigration services were not made aware of this charge. By 2007, Terrapon was dating a woman and the two had a child. On July 4th, the fireworks captivated Zena and she stood in the alleyway behind her home to watch. Her parents remained inside, letting their 12-year-old enjoy the night, but their peace would be interrupted by their daughter's screams. After hearing the screams, Zena's father, McCall, rushed out his home in time to see a gray van leaving the scene, but Zena was nowhere in sight. McCall was able to give police a description of the van, the driver, and a partial license plates number. The description matched one of the Linux neighbors, and the man was questioned. In believing this, the police did not place out an Amber Alert. They believed that they might have caught whoever took Zena. However, the neighbor was ruled out. And at 4 a.m. on July 5th, Tacoma police requested an Amber Alert. But the receiving officer, he fell asleep and he didn't issue the warning until 8 a.m. So time was lost. So the police went on searching for different people who matched the description along with the van. And they ran across Terrapon four days later. They noticed the license plates on his car had been changed and they found a young girl's undergarments in his car. He was arrested for failing to register at his new address but he eventually confessed to Zena's kidnapping, rape, and murder. 
In order to avoid a death sentence and through his attorney, Terrapahan told police where Zena's body was located. The young girl was found near Silver Lake in Pierce County. She died from front force trauma to the head. He told authorities that the night of Zena's kidnapping, he was angry because he could not see his son. Terrapon's arrest opened a can of worms as police began to investigate his involvement in two other crimes. One victim was kidnapped on her way to school in 2000. Another included a teen under the age of 16 who Terrapon allegedly purchased in exchange for furniture. So in order to get her, I guess he gave her parents or whoever had her furniture and they let the little girl live with him. And CPS was called twice to that home because the young girl was staying with him. But when they arrived, they could not find the teen. So no further action was taken. In both cases, he was charged with rape and child rape. However, he pled not guilty to these. Police also began to investigate Terrapon's involvement in the killing of 10-year-old Andriana Jackson, whose remains were found in Pierce County in 2006. This was the same county that Zena was found, and Adriana actually had been missing a year prior to her body being found. However, until this day, Andriana Jackson's death remains unsolved. I will also write about her. For Zena's rape and murder, Terrapon was sentenced to life in prison. Her family would eventually sue the state because they felt that an Amber Alert should have been announced sooner. They also felt that Terrapon should have been deported back to his country and that would have saved their daughter's life. However, the wrongful death lawsuit was dismissed. Who knows if Terrapon would have grown into the person that he became if it were not for the sexual and physical abuse he suffered at the hands of his family, even though he had no right to take Zena's life or to affect the other young girls' lives that he did. He may have been a victim early on in his life, but he was certainly no victim at the end. While an early deportation would have saved Zena, it's most likely he would have continued to rape and kill children back in Thailand. Zena's family came to America for a dream, but instead they ended with a nightmare. May Zena rest in peace.